Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give God some praise on this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. The word says, I was glad when they said unto me, come and go into the house of the Lord. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah. Is it just me? Or are you glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. We give God glory and honor. I stand in my pastor's absence on today. We are so excited because him and First Lady are on their way to Greensboro to take their daughter for her final year in her undergrad studies. So we are excited. Can we give God glory for that on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Before we get started on today, we want to get announcements out of the way. And how many know that school is right around the corner? So before school starts, we want the community, the kids, their families, their parents, grandparents to come out. We're having a back to school bash on August the 27th from 1 to 5 p.m. at Graham Farm, which is located at 99 Bertha Drive in Regalwood, North Carolina. We've got water slides. We've got bouncy houses. We're going to have a kickball tournament. We've got a whole lot of activities in store for everybody. And we got free food. So come on out and have a good time before school goes back. Join us in fellowship. Everybody say women's conference. Everybody say open womb. Mm, how many know a birthing takes place when the womb is open? My God, my God, my God. We have a women's conference in Wilmington, North Carolina on September the 9th and September the 10th. And guess what? Men is not just for women. It's for everybody. So come out and be blessed. We have three dynamic speakers and all the information is on our Facebook play page. Please register on today. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Mm, we just thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We welcome our Facebook and our Zoom families on this morning. We welcome everyone that's in the sanctuary on this morning. God sent us an angel on this morning. So we thank God for him on this morning. Hallelujah, God. How many know you never know when an angel is in your presence? My God. So we welcome you on this morning and we thank God for you on today. We have a treat on today. We love our pastor. But in his absence, Prophet Warren Evans Jr. will be bringing the word from the Lord on today. And we are so excited about having our brother with us again on today. So without further ado, worship team, come on. That's me and Stan, y'all, this morning. But the word says we're two or three. What does it say? Where two or three are gathered together, so shall he be in the presence. So, Father, we welcome you on this morning. We thank God for your presence on this morning, for your son, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit on this morning. We invoke you into this atmosphere. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you on this morning, Father. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Amen. May your struggles keep you near the cross, and may your troubles show that you need God, and may your battles in the way they should, and may your bad days prove that God is good, and may your whole life prove that God is good. May your struggles keep you near the cross, and may your bad days prove that 
that you need, God. May your battles in the way they should, and may your bad days prove that God is good, and may your whole life prove that God is good. May your struggles keep you near the cross, and may your troubles prove that you need God, and may your battles in the the glory and the honor we lift our hands in worship we bless your holy name you deserve the glory hallelujah and the honor we lift our hands in worship. We bless your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, you deserve the glory, hallelujah. And the honor, we lift our hands in worship, we bless your holy name, you deserve the glory, and the honor, we lift our hands in worship. We bless your holy name, cause you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no like you you deserve the glory and the honor we lift our hands in worship we bless your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor 
we lift our hands and worship we bless your holy name you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you hallelujah there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you hallelujah 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 there's no one else like you god no one else like you there's no one else like you no other god we put before you there is no one else like you you are alpha and omega the beginning and the end hey god you are the creator mm. i say it all the time but god you're the creator of the universe so we worship you on this morning not the universe god we thank you hey god we thank you we honor you and we praise you you are god and god all by yourself you are a great god hey god you are a great god we thank you and we honor you you're such a good good father hey god god high on this morning father we ask that you sit worn down hey and you stand up bring a word for your people on this morning god let it be a word of deliverance hey god are you let it be a word of salvation let it be a word of healing on this morning god not just physical healing but spiritual healing emotional healing mental healing god we thank you father we thank you on this morning hey god lord god we thank you we give you honor and we give you praise in jesus name hallelujah in jesus name hallelujah 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 god we thank you you're my healer hey god mm -mm. father you're my provider mm -mm. lord jesus god we thank you father we thank you hey god we thank you father we thank you hallelujah we thank you god we thank you Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in this atmosphere on today. God, we thank you for the dwell on today. God, we just say thank you. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, hallelujah. Hey, God, God, we thank you. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, thank you. Can we just thank the Lord on this morning? Thank you, thank you, Lord. Hey, God, thank you. Father, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. But most of all, God, we thank you for being God. Hey, God, mm. the head over our lives. God, we thank you. Hallelujah, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you. My Lord, God, we thank you. Mm. Hallelujah, we thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God, we thank you. God, God, we thank you for allowing our pastor and first lady and their family to have traveling mercies and arrive to their destination safely. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Mm, I just got the text that said we are here. Hey, God, we're here. Father, we're here. They're there, 
but we are here. And God, we thank you for being an omnipresent God, mm, my Lord. God, we thank you. Father, we're here. We're here with a spirit of expectancy on this morning. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hallelujah. First and foremost, I'd like to give honor to the Lord and Savior of my life, Jesus Christ. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, nobody's a stranger to me here now. We've, I've been here a couple of times. Uh, I want to thank Pastor Williams for allowing me to be here again. Uh, Mr. Rhonda, I thank you for um, having he having to, you to reach out to me because like I said it's an honor and a privilege my brother Ron is here today it's good to see him it's, it's, it tickled me because I was supposed to have called him uh, because Miss LaRonda invited him to come one day he said I'm going to come one day and so he calls me out of the blue and I forgot to call him and he said hey Warren I'm thinking about going to the to the church uh, Miss LaRonda is, uh, is, is a part of and uh, I'm thinking about going there tomorrow. And I say, you know, a funny thing is I'm going to be there tomorrow. He said, oh, great. Oh, great. So he said, well, I'll be there. And sure enough, he's a man of his word. So thank the Lord for that. So I got something serious I would like to talk about. Um, and the Lord is leading me in this direction. And I'm hoping and praying that that even though we're small in number, we have, I, I like a crowd like this because we can literally really get down to the meat and potatoes and everybody's here for the purpose of being here and learning something. Amen. So I have Miss LaRonda to give me a couple of passages of scriptures to read, but I also want to uh, set something up. So before she reads, I'll, I'll share something with you, but Right now, I just need to, to pray. So everybody, would you please just bow your head, close your eyes. Father God, we thank you right now for your grace, your mercy, your peace that surpasses all understanding, God. Everything that's contrary to you, we bind right now in the name of Jesus, God. Every foul spirit, God, everything that's not like you, we ask that you remove it now, God. And we thank you right now that your grace, your mercy, and peace is here, God, and that everyone under the sound of my voice, God, that they receive your word that is planted in the soil of their hearts, God, and that it grows and that it prospers and that it does exactly what you have called it to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So before I have Miss LaRonda read, I'm going to point out a couple of scriptures that I'd like to talk about. And then we're going to have Miss LaRonda to read uh, the scriptures that the Lord has blessed me to be able to, to extract from the word. If you were to look at 1 Samuel and you studied the life of Samuel, uh, and Samuel was a prophet in the Bible, and he was about three years old when he began to minister before the Lord. If you read the story, it's in 1 Samuel. So please write this down because I want you to go back and look at it. So there's a several different scriptures that I want you to pay attention to. So 1 Samuel this young man was three years old when he began to be used by the Lord. Can you imagine being three years old and God using you to shift and change the nation? Three, at three years old. If you go to 2 Kings uh, verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 21, um, Joash was seven years old when he became king, okay? Seven years old. So at the age of seven years old, God put him in place and he became king. Now his mother, uh, I'm going to try to pronounce this right. His mother's name was Zibia, okay? And the Bible said that he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. As long as he followed the instructions of the priest. If you read that scripture, you read, those, you read the story, you'll find out that this young man had somebody that positively influenced him to do 
the right thing, okay? Now, can you imagine being an adult and having to listen to a seven-year-old tell you what to do? Can you imagine a little seven-year-old telling you, you need to go over here and you need to go sit down over there? Seven years old, can you imagine that? Under normal circumstances, that's not the way we do and conduct ourselves, is it? Because we look at you, a little child, go sit your tail down somewhere, okay? Uh, if you read in 2 Kings, the 21st chapter, the first verse, Manasseh was um, 12 years old when he became king. And the Bible says that he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And they always named the mother next. And, said, and his mother's name was? I'm going somewhere. I ain't, I ain't bashing the mamas. I ain't bashing the mamas. I just want y'all to pay attention. Okay. Second Kings, the 22nd chapter in the first verse. I mean, in the first verse, it says, and Joash was eight years old when he became king. At eight years old, he became king. Okay. And everybody knows in, in, in the book of Samuel, everybody knows the story about David. And the Bible says that David was, a, was around the age of 16 to 19 when he was anointed king and killed Goliath. Everybody knows that story. The secret behind all these people was the influence that they had. It was the people that influenced them to go right or to go left. In your life, you're going to have people that you're around that are going to influence you to either go right or to go left. Now it's up to you to make a choice and to make a decision. Influence means the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something or the effect itself. So it's the, it's the ability to have the person's character be altered by what you tell them by what you say to them. And our problem is we listen to every other influence except for the ones that is going to influence us to go in the right direction. And we make a decision. We make a decision to pay attention to a negative influence and we go and do certain things. Kids today, you're going to be faced with influences when you get back in school. And you yourself are going to be an influence. And so you can tell somebody to go right or to go left, and it depends on your influence what this person is going to do. I may be able to influence somebody to do good if they're around me long enough, or if I'm out there a heathen doing stuff, I may influence them to do the wrong thing, but I have an influence over them. You understand what I'm saying? And so as we are supposed, quote unquote, to be men and women of God, we're supposed to render a certain influence. We're supposed to be releasing something that is supposed to change the lives of individuals. And see, it's all nice and it's all well when you're in four walls, but your influence really takes place when you're outside. See, everybody can impact somebody. Everybody has an influence over somebody. It's what type of influence are you becoming? What type of influence are you listening to? These kids were kings at 8, 7, 12 years old, 16 to 19 years old. They're kings. Do you think they know about the worldly system or the things of the world? No, they're kids. So who were they listening to? They were listening to their influencers. They were listening to the people that was telling them what to do, where to go, how to conduct yourself because they had never been in that position before. They didn't know anything about it. Now listen to this. Go ahead and read the, the first scripture. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, so faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the influence is something that they heard, right? Right? They heard something. And then not, not only to hear, to hear not only means I heard something, but to hear means there's a movement. When you hear something, you do something, right? 
So these people, they had these other people influencing them. So they heard what was said. Now it's up to them to make a decision to do something. What's the next scripture? Read the next scripture, please. James, James chapter mm -hmm. one, 22 through 25. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself. For he sees himself, he sees his face. And goeth his way. Leaves. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. And he forget who he is. He saw himself and he see himself turn away and don't even recognize who he is anymore. Forget who he is just that quick. Go ahead. Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Now listen to this. You think about these young kids being influenced by whoever the influence was. And like I said, a, a lot of times they list they listed their mothers because, of course, kids that age are going to be attached to their mothers, right? So, so the moms influence the kids on what they should do and who they should listen to. The, the kids were not going to go against what their moms were saying at that age, at seven and eight years old. So they listen to their moms or they listen to the influencer, the major influencer, and she said, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And when they did that, what happened was, they, they had an opportunity to listen and to make a decision. Now, the kid had the final say. So the kid could have been like, no, I'm not going to do that. We're going to go this direction. But the mom had so much influence or their influencer had so much influence over them that whatever the influencer say, the person behind the scenes, whatever they said, the person in the forefront did. We are just like that. We're supposed to be connected to our influencer so greatly that when he says something, he, when he says something, we're supposed to take it at face value and we're supposed to move forward and do exactly what he says because his influence is so great. Have you ever seen kids that, that want to be around certain people? Like say, for example, if the father likes to go fishing and he takes the kid fishing and the kid catches his first fish, he's going to be ecstatic and he's going to be like, oh my God, I want to go fishing all the time, daddy. I love it. And, and, the, and the dad sits there and he teaches the kid certain things and he's spending time with him and he's talking to him about certain things. And this kid is getting the influence of his father. He's getting the mannerisms of his father. Have you ever seen kids, uh, they, they, they follow adults so much that they start walking like the adults walk? They limping it. Well, what you limping for? Well, well Papa limp. That's what Papa, well, I want to walk like him. Well, ain't nothing wrong with your leg. Papa got shot in the leg. By Aunt Coochie, so that's the reason why he's limping. What you ain't ain't nothing happened to you. But the influence is so great, he's mimicking what he or she sees. And the problem is, is that they spend so much time with the influences that they become a part of what they've seen. And our issue is we won't get close enough to the influencer to hear what he says and then operate the way he says to operate. The Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then if you read in the other scripture, James, it says, don't be a hearer only, but a doer of the word. He says, for those that hear the word and don't do it, it's like somebody who don't even recognize who they really are. He said, you don't know who you are if you heard something and you didn't move to what you heard. And God is trying to tell us, like, we're hearing his word, but we're not doing it. So we really don't know who we are. We don't recognize who we are. He says, I'm trying to show you in the word who you are. He said, you'll get the word, you'll read it. But then when you turn and walk away, you forget what I've taught you. You forget the influence that I had on you. You'll come in here. You'll get this word. God has downloaded a mouthpiece to influence you to go in the world and make a change. But the word declares as soon as you leave these doors, you forget who you are. 
You forget that the word says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And then you let somebody else influence you and tell you who you are, tell you who they think you are. I had a conversation the other day with an individual and the individual was saying to me, they say, well, you, you know, you sometimes you seem overconfident. And I said, no, I know my worth. I know who I am and I know whose I am. And I said, I've been in a position to where I listen to somebody devalue me. And I said, once I recognize and realize what the Lord says and it didn't line up with what the Lord says, how can I listen to them? And I broke away from their influence. And I took on my identity in the Lord. Not walking in arrogance, but walking in his confidence, knowing that my God can do all things. He said, is there anything? He, 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 he said to Sarah when Sarah laughed at him about having a child in her old age, he said, is there anything too hard for me? So if I serve a God like that, there's nothing that's impossible for God. And I'm with him. He's my influencer. How can I go wrong? He made the world. And he made me. So if that's my influence, I want to walk like he walks. That's pop out of me. That's my daddy. I want to I wanna talk like he talks. I want to move in the ways that he's calling me to move. And so the, so the person said, well, you know, you seem overconfident sometimes. I said, no, I just know my value and I won't let you or anybody else devalue me because I listen to somebody else who has told me who I am and he puts me in check. So if he says I'm above only and not beneath, then why would I walk around like I'm beneath? Why would I do that? If he says you're the head and not the tail, then why would I walk around acting like I'm the tail? When God says you're above only and not beneath, the head and not the tail. So my influence, the one that influenced me has caused me to think differently. He has caused me to think on the right hand side of the father, which is Jesus Christ. He, he's caused me to think on that mannerism, on that side. And the world ain't ready for that. And particularly the church world ain't ready for that. They want you to be a, 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 a woe is me mentality. They, 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 they will tell you the word. Some, some ministries will tell you the word, but dare you to do it. They want you to be like the man that, that, that looks in the glass and sees his face and then turns and forget who he is. That's what they want. That's what religion teaches you. It teaches you to, to, I heard what I am. I heard what I'm capable of. But as soon as I leave here, I better go back to the same life that I've been living. I better go back. I'm going to make the church folk mad. And like I said, I don't subscribe to that because my influencer is, is, is different. I'm getting influenced from the most high God. So if he's influencing me, then I'm going to look different. I'm going to think different. There's certain things that I'm going to accept. There's certain things that I'm not going to accept because I have an influencer in my life that says, hey, Warren, I made you and I'm telling you this is what you can do. So the problem is, is we're not listening to who's supposed to be influencing us. The problem is we're not paying attention to the right influences. The problem is, is we've grown accustomed to living in nothing, to thinking about nothing, and to be trivial in ministry. I call them, we are accustomed to being sideline citizens. You know what sideline citizens are? Sideline citizens are the ones that you see, like say for example, if you had a football game, they can tell you every play that the player is supposed to do and how they messed up and how they should have been doing this and how they should have done that, but they never played the game. They've never been on the field. They don't understand how it is to have a 250 pound man as fast as I don't know what chasing you. And they trying to tell you how to play the game. Could you imagine somebody say, well, all you got to do is grab the ball and run to the other end of the court. That's all you got to do. This is it's just it's simple. Well, if it's so simple, <laughs> why you ain't out there doing it? Well, well, well you know, uh, uh, I was back in the day when I was in the uh, first grade, I did, score a touchdown in the first grade 
and I was playing against everybody in diapers. You know, they, they had that flashback where they, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Sideline citizens, they sit on the sidelines and they criticize you for being in the game. See, in the game, you're going to make mistakes. And then you're supposed to go and, 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 and watch the feedback of what you've done wrong. See, God allows you to get in the game and make mistakes, repent, and get it right. If you came from a life of, of being angry and fussing and cussing and fighting, and then God has changed your life, you're going to be tested. Certain things are going to happen, but God's influence is eventually supposed to take over in the areas where the negative influences were. He has to push these things out, and then he's bringing himself in. I have plenty of stories like that I could tell you, but I ain't going to bore you. Uh, I, I've shared with Mr. Ron a couple of things that I've gotten into in my life. And, and if it hadn't been for the Lord, I would not be here. I'd be in jail for attempted murder or murder or something. Cause I know, I know me and I know how I was. And, and I had a situation with a guy one time and, and the guy said some things that I really didn't like and what he was going to do to my family. And so I had already made preparations to make sure that my family was going to be taken care of one way or the other. And my dad and one of my uncles who's going on to be with the Lord intervened and they had me and the guy to have a meeting together. And we had a meeting and I, and I, I had a firearm on me and it was in my truck. And when I met with my uncle and my dad, they were like, uh, do you have any guns on you? I said, no, it ain't on me. I didn't lie. It wasn't on me. It was in my truck. And so when we, when we finally finished the, the, the meeting and we, we squared everything away. Um, I went and I talked to the guy and I said, man, you was about to get it. And he was like, get what? So I go to my, my truck and I'm pulling out shells out of my gun and sticking it back under the seat. And he looking at me like, man, this dude is crazy. And years later, I asked my dad recently, uh, uh, probably about three weeks ago, I asked my dad, I said, dad, this situation that, that we was in and, and, uh, and, and you and my uncle came in and y'all, y'all intervene y'all wouldn't let me leave you wouldn't let me leave until like way after the guy had left and i said why didn't you let me leave i said did you know i had a gun he said yeah i knew you had it i said well how'd you know he said because i knew you carried guns and um i said so so why didn't you let me he said because I, I didn't want you to do anything foolish because i knew how you how you were so we had to just kind of hold you there, let you cool down so that the whole situation could, I'm telling you about influence. So my father and my uncle influenced me to, Warren, calm down. You, we, you have the right structure in your life that you don't need to do this. And if you pay attention as believers, we have the right structure in our life. We have the right influences in our life that we can make a difference in the world if we allow him to influence us. If you allow the word of God to influence your everyday thinking, if you allow the word of God to allow him to influence your movements, it will change your life, A, but B, you become an influence to other people. That's the whole goal of us being believers and he says, go into all the world, go into the highways and hedges and make disciples of all. How do you do that? It's not by what you're always saying. It's about how you move, how you maneuver. And then the person's going to be inquisitive about you because the Bible says we're peculiar creature. We're different. They see something different. You don't look the same. What is it about you? And then they start talking to you and you can tell them and influence them to make a change and that's what God wants so if we can get our people and I'm talking about church folk if we can get our people to stop playing church to listen to God's influence and to become an influence we can change every community that there is there would be no poverty if we applied the word of God it would be none Sickness would dry up. It would dissipate and disappear because it cannot stand in the will and the power of God. But what it is, is like I said, we hear the word and we forget as soon as we hit those doors, what manner of man we are. 
If God is trying to tell you today that you have great influence, if you listen to him and you operate and activate according to what God has said, it will change not only your life, but everybody's life. Now, you could be in a positive environment and it changes your life and it challenges you to move up. And the problem is, is we don't like to be challenged to grow. The growing pain aspects hurts. And that's the problem. You're comfortable with where you are and you don't want to move farther. And so the positive influence is something that you're not used to. So you don't know how to accept it. When God begins to deal with you, you got to spend time with your influencer. Can you settle yourself long enough to hear what God has to say about you? Can you be still long enough? Cut the TV off, the radio off, and listen to what the Lord has to say. Get in his face. Hear what he has to say. What if it took a day? What if it took two days? What if you had to cut the TV off all week when you got home and just listen to the Lord? Could you, could you stand to do that? Could you stand to be with yourself for that long? Or would you be used to the negative influences? Because everything you do has an influence. When you cut the TV on, what are they doing? What do they call a TV? Tele what? Television. It's an influence. It's influencing you. Have you noticed? Listen to this. I'm going to show you something. Have you noticed recently they started pushing the homosexual agenda on TV first? You've seen like they have a homosexual in every show now. Have y'all noticed that? Y'all hadn't noticed that. Every show now, is, it's like that. Years ago, you very seldomly saw that. Why? Because they're pushing an influence. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get the youth. They're trying to get the youth to shake their fist at God. They're telling their vision. I don't mind standing boldly and saying it. I'm not afraid. I, I rode with the Lord. He runs the show. You understand what I'm saying? The Lord runs the show. But they're pushing a vision. And we have our kids watching, even on cartoons now they have it. You would have never seen that years ago. They have it on cartoons now. Why? Because they're pushing a vision. They're trying to influence people. Certain music. Y'all ever listen to music? Anybody used to date anybody back in the day? Y'all used to be on dates and stuff? What would y'all do? Y'all put on certain music, right? Certain music makes you want to do certain things, right? You got a, you got a, you got a young lady. Y'all, y'all, y'all like, y'all ain't never, y'all ain't never been with nobody? You can't say, no, I haven't, because you, some of you get kids. So you, you know you've been with somebody. Y'all, y'all cut some music on, right? Music playing, set the atmosphere, didn't it? Because it was influencing you. You know what? If I play, if I play Teddy Pendergraft, so you can turn them off. So I ain't got to say that he'd do everything. Turn them off, light a candle. Because he was in what? Influencing you. It's because of what you heard. You heard something and then you did something. So God wants to do this. God wants to let you hear something. He said, but don't just be a to hear is to move. To hear is to, if you heard it, you'll do it. If the Lord says, write the vision, you ain't really hear him until you start writing the vision. Does that make sense? And then when you write the vision, he'll say, make it plain. So that those that read it can run with it. Because you gotta, they, they, they've got to see something. And your vision influences their vision. Habakkuk, isn't that the word? You see how that works? So because you listen, he gives you something. He tells you how to orchestrate it. But we won't take the steps to do what we need to do to make it happen. Because we don't want to listen to his influence. It sounds good. It sounds good to say, I hear the Lord, I listen to the Lord. No, you really don't. Because if you ain't moving, the Bible clearly tells you that you need to be a doer and not just a hearer. There are things that God is going to require you to do. And you're going to have to make a choice. 
Who's your influencer? Who's influencing you? Who are you listening to? So when you listen to the Lord, we're going to give you some steps. A, you're going to have to hear, right? And hear means you're going to have to make a move. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans, right? Then James come around and say, hey, don't just hear it. Because if you really hear it, you start moving. And then he gives you an example. If you don't move, you like this person that you heard the word. And then as soon as you turned away from seeing your own face, you don't even know who you are anymore. You don't remember that you got a bump right here and you scratch your face and it, and it hurts. You forgot you had a bump because you just forgot that quick. It's just that simple. He is trying to simplify the gospel. He's trying to simplify his word because he wants to make a powerful impact in your life. And he wants you to be powerful in your own right. He wants you to impact others. That's what being in the kingdom is. Thy kingdom has come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are the ones that God has planted here to be an influence in the earth so that heaven can come to earth. People are trying to die to get to heaven. He said, but my will should be done on earth as it is in heaven. He said, you ain't got to die to experience a heavenly experience. You can have it here. And I'm trying to get the influence in you. I'm trying to get enough of me in you so you'll walk like me. So you'll limp like I limp. If I got a limp, you got a limp. That's what the Lord is trying to do. The things that I do, I want you to be able to do. Jesus said this best. Jesus would go off and get influence from the Father. He'd come back and he'd minister to the people. He'd go off and he'd get instruction from the Father and influence from the Father, and then he'd come back and he'd minister to the people. And this is what he said. He says, I only do the things that I see my Father in heaven do. He says, I only, I only do the things that my Father impressed upon me to do. I only do the things that I'm influenced by my daddy to do. And he says, you can do greater. Ooh. Did he not say that? Didn't the, word, didn't the word say these things you can do and greater because I go to the father in your behalf? He said, so the influence that you have will be greater than my influence because I'm going and I'm rooting for you and I'm getting instruction and I'm going to break the instructions down to you to make it simple. And all you got to do is follow the instructions. Follow my influence. Let me influence you to be a healer. Let me influence you to be a deliverer. Let me influence you to change the financial situation of your whole industry, of your whole community, of your whole neighborhood, starting with your family. That's what he wants. But you've got to make up in your mind that you want God to be the number one influencer. How many would love to see the kingdom of heaven on earth? Thy will be done. God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. How many? First hand went up a little man. Bam. He said me. And in order to do that, you've got to get rid of all the other influences. So in ending, my question to you is this. What influences are you willing to get rid of in order for the right influence to take hold? Drugs and alcohol is an influence. Indulging in TV, watching all these crazy shows is an influence. All of these things influence you. One more story and then we're going to go. I had a friend of mine and um, he had a friend that was in South Carolina and the friend asked him to pick up some CBD oil, which CBD is not bad as long as it doesn't have the THC in it, right? It's a, it's a, uh, and it can have trace amounts and still be good, but if it has like a very strong amount, that's basically marijuana. So he's like, man, listen, uh, I heard these gummies are good for sleeping. I'd like to try some, do you mind grabbing me some and, and mailing me some? So the guy was like, yeah. He said, well, you know, get you some and, and try some too. Well, the guy didn't do his research and grabbed the wrong kind. So he grabbed a kind that has what they call a Delta-8 in it, which is, uh, which is a derivative of, of the marijuana plant that caused the psychedelic plant because it has the THC in it. <laughs> so unbeknownst to him, he takes this stuff and his mind begins to be altered. And he said, I got real paranoid, got real scared. And he said, I was, you know, I was talking and hearing myself talking. And, you know, he said, I went to sleep and woke back up. He said, it took several days 
for it to leave my system. And he said, I realized that I was under its influence. He said, because it just had my body just acting so crazy. So that's another way, like, like I'm telling you, like drugs and things of that nature, it influenced you to move differently and influence you to think differently. Now, could you imagine uh, us being on a drug called TV or, or social media drug? You know, look, look at how social media has affected so many kids. Now, these kids are, you know, kids that's punks are being bullies now behind the keyboard. And you catch them in real life, they, 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 they can't fight their way out of a wet paper bag with scissors in their hand. You know, but they have an influence and they type in these things and these kids are feeling some type of way. And they go out and commit suicide or all these other things because of something somebody else said. Not true about them, but it's just they said it. It, it influenced them to do something wrong. Does that make sense? So God is trying to get his influence in us and all this other stuff out. So it takes a little bit of time. It takes spending time with the influencer. You can get so good with God that he'll treat you like he did Abraham. He was on his way. The Lord was on his way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said to, his, to the angels, he says, shall I go and tell my buddy Abraham what I'm about to do? Because that man has been in my face so much that now he's influencing me. The Lord said he's influencing me to share with him what I'm going to do. See, that's what you want. You want to be to the point where you can influence the Lord. Say, Lord, I know for a fact that if you don't intervene, this man going to die. But if you give him one more chance, Lord, just give him a chance to live and to change his heart so that he can meet you. And God will do that. God said, you know what? I, 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 for you, I'll do that. Because you spend enough time with him and you have influence. I want to be the type of man that a man that hears God, but also a, a, a man that God hears. That's what I desire to be. I desire to not only be a man that hears God, but a man that God hears. Somebody that, that can, can pray for somebody in their sickness and God hears me and they become well because the Lord blessed me to have an influence with him, but it requires me to spend time and listen to his influence. And then he'll see a mirror image of himself. Say, oh, he looked just like me, that's my son. Let me, let me go see what my son wants. Amen. My son, if my, if my son comes to me right now, he say, daddy, I need a daddy can I get? That's my son. As long as he ain't talking about nothing bad, I got you, son. So what type of influence would you want in your life? Let's move all the negative influences out. So if, if you would be so bold as to meet me to the altar, if you're ready to get rid of your influences, if you're not, if you like the way you live and like what you're doing, then stay there and do what you do. But this is for the real ones who desire a change in their life and want God to be the major influence, not only to be a person that hears God, but a person that God hears. I need y'all to meet me at the altar.